And greetings from Mustang Stadium here in Owings Mills, where this weekend we will crown a champion in the ECAC Division III Men's Soccer Championship. Apologies for that. We are good to go in the ECAC Division Three Men's Soccer Championship. Glenn Clark with you from Mustang Stadium here on GoMustangSports.com. The semifinals tonight, the championship tomorrow as the number one seeded Stevenson University Mustangs look to take home their first ECAC crown since 2010. Tonight in the semis, they get the Cougars of Kane University. Let's take a look at how the ECAC has played out. We begin on the side of the bracket that these teams found themselves in last weekend, an event held by Wilkes. Stevenson defeated Westminster 3-2 and then backed it up on Sunday by knocking out the hosts, Wilkes, 2-0 to advance the semifinals. Meanwhile, Kane got a 5-2 victory over Hunter and then followed up with a 1-0 win over the Knights of Arcadia. On the other side of the bracket, the quarter final saw Muhlenberg crush Marymount 9-1 then defeat NYU 1-0 meanwhile they needed penalty kicks for NGCU to, adva NGCU to advance past McDaniel didn't matter they ultimately fell to Widener who had defeated Brevard 1-0 and then got the 2-1 victory over NJCU so the second semifinal tonight will be set let's take a look at the bracket for this weekend First game, as we mentioned, Stevenson and Kane followed up later on the night by Muhlenberg and Widener, the winners, squaring off tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the ECAC. I think it's actually at 4, yeah, in the ECAC championship game right here at Mustang Stadium. So that's a run through the bracket. Let's see a little bit more about the quarterfinal games these two teams played. We will begin with the visitors, the Cougars from Kane, defeating Arcadia 1-0. Max Acosta scoring the winner for the Cougars in the victory despite the fact they were outshot in the contest. They got seven big saves from their goalie Dylan Konzelman in order to hang in there and ultimately pull out the victory 1-0. For the Mustangs, they got a pair of goals, a brace from Tarek Lee as he scored twice in the first half and that was all they would need to defeat Wilkes 2-0 in the quarterfinals. They outshot Wilkes 24-12 in the game. Got four saves from Matt Stellatano in the victory. Out cornered Wilkes 5-2 in the contest. They committed only five fouls during the course of that quarterfinal game in order to punch their ticket for the semifinals tonight. Our tale of the tape. What have these teams done statistically coming into tonight's first ECAC semifinal. See the Mustangs have scored 1.7 goals per game while recording 17.8 shots per contest. They have allowed just 1.13 goals per game while Kane has allowed 1.14 goals per contest. Stevenson has pitched 11 shutouts on the season. Matt Stellatano setting a new career record for shutouts here at Stevenson University. Kane, six clean sheets on the year. Mustangs averaging roughly six corner kicks per game. Kane, four and a half corner kicks per contest. Stevenson, 0 for 2 on their penalty kick tries this year. Kane, 1 for 3. The Mustangs have been handed 23 yellow cards, while the Cougars have been handed 17. We meet our players to watch in starting lineups for these two teams. We will begin with the visitors, the player to watch for the Cougars. How about Max Acosta? He just scored the game winner in that quarterfinal in the second half to defeat Arcadia. Second team all NJAC performer this season, the sophomore forward from Linden, New Jersey. The Dwyer Tech Academy graduate, nine goals, tied for the team lead this year. He added three assists. 
minutes, 21 points, led the team. He also led the team with 55 shot attempts on the year. Our player to watch for the Cougars, number 20, Max Acosta. The starting lineup for Kane in goal, Dylan Konzelman, the sophomore from New Providence, New Jersey, an honorable mention all in Jack performer this year. 18 games, he's allowed 22 goals, a 1.17 goals against average. He's made 64 saves, stopping 74.4% of the shots that he has faced. He had three clean sheets on the year. He's joined in the pitch by Daniel Calderon, as well as Phil Lopez, Brian Blandin, Felipe Lucas, Alex Nicole, as well as Patrick Kowal, Danny Guillen, Ben Alexander, Max Acosta, and Calvin Carbajal. That you're starting 11 for the Cougars of Kane. And for the Mustangs, our player to watch, the aforementioned Tarek Lee. He did have that brace, two first-half goals in the quarterfinal, quarterfinal win over Wilkes, a first-team all-conference performer in the MAC. Six goals, three assists, 15 points on the year. Took a team leading 63 shots on the season. He's also a Casida Academic All-District first-team performer. Was, of course, the Rookie of the Year in the MAC Commonwealth back in 2017. The Baltimore native who was homeschooled, our player to watch in tonight's game. Our starting 11 of for the Mustangs in goal, the sophomore Matt Stellatano, as we mentioned, already broke the career shutout record earlier in the season. Honorable mention, all Matt Commonwealth performer, also an all academic district first team performer. Three saves in the semifinal, the shutout win that he had over Wilkes in the quarterfinals. Stellatano. 22 games on the season. He's allowed 23 goals, a 1.06 goals against average. He's made 93 saves, stopping 80.2% of the shots that he has faced. Eight clean sheets on the year. He is joined in the pitch by Christian Batita, DR Medtar, Diego Guerrero, our player to watch, Tarek Lee. Also, Jevin Lay in the starting lineup tonight. Sean McDonald, Nick Ellis, Chris Gonzalez, Dylan Holy, and Pete Wickheiser joins them in the starting 11 for tonight's ECAC Division III men's soccer semifinal. So those are your teams, Stevenson and Kane, getting ready for opening kickoff. Stevenson 14-6-3 on the year, looking to match the program record of 15 wins for the season that was set back in 2005, of course. If they could win the championship this weekend, they would set a new program record for the most wins in a season. They went 4-3-1 in conference play. They are 7-2-2 two two on the year here at Mustang Stadium. The Cougars come in tonight 11-7-3 on the year. They went 3-3-3 three, three three in conference. They are 3-4-1 away from home on the year. They have been struggling coming into ECAC play down the stretch this season. They did not win any of their last four games. They had lost three of them. They mixed in a scoreless draw as well, but they have turned it on. Meanwhile, the Mustangs have scored two or more goals in three of their last four games and won four of their last five overall. So they are riding a bit of a hot streak. Their only loss in there was to Mighty Messiah in the Matt Commonwealth Tournament playing really good soccer. Their goal was to make the postseason. Check. Now they have a chance to win the first ECAC championship the program has claimed since 2010. They are two wins away from doing just that. Stevenson in the white shirts, white shorts with the green numerals and trim. They will be moving from right to left on your internet dial here in this first half, and we'll touch it up first. Kane in the blue and white shirts with the white numerals. They will be moving from left to right when they have the ball. And we are glad to have you on board. Came two of a triple header for us at GoMustangSports.com today. The second semifinal coming up later on tonight. Stevenson football fell 
in their bowl game, losing to Johns Hopkins a little bit earlier today. It has been a busy day here at Stevenson University as we are underway in the ECAC semifinals. And the Mustangs trying to make a statement early, much like they did in the quarterfinals. Those two early goals from Tarek Lee set the tone en route to a victory over Wilkes. McDonald trying to get back on top of the ball, not able to find it. The Cougars getting cleared away. Ellis not able to get it. It'll be headed forward. Guerrero loses it in the midfield. Mustang's able to get it right back. Nick Ellis named this week to the MAC All Sportsmanship team for the fall. Congratulations to the senior defender from New Windsor by way of South Carroll High School. Carroll County just up the road. Guerrero slips it forward. Mustang's trying to get going offensively. Medtart swings it out wide. Stevenson looking for a combo ball. Lee settles it, not letting it get out of bounds. Now plays it back to the Guerrero in the middle of the pitch. Mustangs will switch fields, bring it down to Ellis. Ellis had some space, slips it forward. Now Wickheiser sends it towards the box. It's knocked out, getting up on it and getting a shot that goes wide as Chris Gonzalez. It'll be a goal kick. As always, never know when Chris Gonzalez's family, including... His grandparents out in New Mexico might be watching. Want to make sure we say hello, big supporters. If you are watching tonight's game, make sure you say hello. At Glenn Clark Radio on Twitter. Tell us who your favorite Mustang is, where you're watching from. Any sort of neat tidbits that we might not know. Who's got a birthday coming up? Who's got an embarrassing story they wouldn't want to let everybody know about. We love sharing those here on the broadcast. Chasing that one down, trying to get it out. It's not going to get out. It's going to be an opportunity in front instead. Still alive, and that'll turn into a corner kick for the Cougars. So just sort of a misread on that ball. It did not have enough pace to get to the end line and was never cleared away. And so, corner opportunity. Over to take it is Nickel. Alex Nickel, the junior from Caldwell, New Jersey, plays it right in the middle of the box. It comes down to the opposite post, and Stella Tano has to knock it away as that was a great chance on the header for Calderon. It'll be another corner, but it's not a goal. And Calderon was all by himself when that ball came in in the third minute. So we'll try from the other side. Second corner already of the early going. Again, it'll be Nickel to take it. This one will sail. And just sort of chucked out wide of the near post. And the goal kick. So a couple of really good chances for the Cougars. That shot off the foot of Lopez. Not able to get it on target. Calderon right there at the post. Gets his head on it. Tries to knock it down, but Stellatano able to protect. Keep it nil-nil. Stellatano is such a talent. Sophomore from Northfield, New Jersey, by way of Mainland High School. Mustangs battling for it over at the far sideline. Squirts through a chip forward. McDonald giving chase, won't get there. Comes all the way back. Konzelman gets rid of it. Swung down to the near side. Calderon slides it forward. Knocked away by Jevin Lay, getting the start tonight. Blandon slips it back to Lopez. And the Cougars will try something else to push this ball forward.
Kane not really able to matriculate through the thirds, get it up into the attacking third. Their only trip in was on a direct ball. It was played out for those two corner kicks. Now finally, a little real estate to work with, chance to attack. And just taking a wild shot, Stellatano has to lay out. What a rip from Nicole. That was saucy. Nicole, sort of momentum carrying him the other way, just blasted on goal. Stellatano's had to make two good saves in the early going of this one. It is a cold night here at Mustang Stadium. Lay plays that one over the near sideline, so it'll be a throw. Cougars seizing momentum in the early going of this game. Gonzalez trying to help clear it away. Guerrero, there was a little bit of trouble there. Gets it all the way out to Batita. Batita pushes forward. McDonald works at the Lee. Lee brings it down to Medtart. Good ball. McDonald on the run. McDonald. Sort of puts it right in the air. He had the right idea, but it sailed over Wickheiser's head. And handball appears to be the call. So it's a free kick for the Cougars. Stevenson had five players named all Matt Commonwealth this week. First time they've had any more than four players named all-conference since joining the Matt Commonwealth. Tarek Lee, first team all-conference. Jay Smith, second team. D.R. Medtart named first team all-conference, also named that academic all-district team by the Cosida folks. Medtart was. Dylan Holy, second team all-Matt Commonwealth. And Stella Tano, honorable mention all Matt Commonwealth, the five honorees this week for the Mustangs. Ball slipped forward, Calderon towards the corner. Meeting him there was Dylan Holy. It's out for a goal kick. Dylan Holy, junior captain on this team. It's been synonymous with the long throw ins. A patented move. Knocks that one away. Guerrero comes up with it. Tries Tarek Lee out wide. Lee wants to go with a through ball, but just a little too far out in front of Wickheiser. Eyes a little bit bigger than your stomach in that situation. Like the idea. Not meant to be. Konzelman able to get rid of it. Mustang's trying to push once again. It comes away to Lee. Lee slips it forward. McDonald trying to find some space towards the corner. It just came off his left foot awkwardly. Cougars trying to clear. Guillen. Now that gets forward, or oh, that sails over the head, but it comes all the way down. Stellatano wants to let it get into the box, which he does, and he puts it on the turf, plays that funky bounce. Ahead to Ellis. Now Wickheiser loses it. A little bit of numbers. Carbajal. Slid out. Kowal, far side of the pitch. Now they'll switch sides, come back down towards Calderon. Calderon, the near sideline, battling. Who's that out off of? It's out off of White. It's out off of Wickheiser. Crossed in by Lopez. Turn, trying to get a shot off. Nothing there. Instead, it'll be played down to Calderon. Calderon looking for the cross. He keeps it on the turf. Knocked away by Holy. Slips it ahead. Medtart turns on it, but can't find McDonald. Oh, great job by McDonald. It's tremendous. That's a splendid tackle working against Blandon. Batita all the way towards the corner. McDonald's fast, but 
not quite that fast. Out for a goal kick. Quick first 10 minutes of this one, scoreless between Stevenson and Kane, ECAC semifinals here at Mustang Stadium. Turned over the near sideline. Throw in coming for the Mustangs. Lucas has two defenders all over him, and he's going to lose it. Batita collects. Batita pushes it back the other way. And Lee and Medtart just weren't quite on the same page. Medtart wanted to go wide. Lee slipped it a little bit further inside. Back down. Opportunity. Shot will be deflected. And that'll be another corner kick. Lucas had the right idea. Always appreciate hearing those tones of Jeff Doherty. Encouraging the Mustangs. Here at Mustang Stadium. I know our friend MC McFadden is here tonight as well. Corner sent in right in front. Knocked down by Stella Tano. Medtart tries to bicycle it out. Tarek Lee on the run. Won't get to it. Going to be out for a throw along the far sideline. So three corners in the first 12 minutes of this game for the Cougars. Lee plays it back to Batita. Be another throw. Batita trying to find Lee. That one's misplayed, so Lee's going to get it. An opportunity for a cross, puts it in front, it's knocked away, and that'll be the first corner for the Mustangs. Lopez couldn't control it, knocks it over the end line. Corner coming, first of the night for the Mustangs. McDonald to take it, McDonald pops it up, edge of the box, it's kept alive. Coming through, shot that's blocked. Wickheiser was the one to take it. Jevin Lay takes a big swing. Nothing going. He'll get another swing. That one blocked right back again. Petita chips it forward. Mustangs might have been offside. Won't matter. The Cougars get it back. Now race towards the ball. Nicole. Nicole slides that right in front. I believe he was trying to get it to Lucas, who was racing up. Goes out. Goal kick. A couple of really good runs from Nickel tonight. Three goals and an assist on the season. He's looking for Lucas. He was tied with Acosta for the team lead with nine goals on the year. 19 points. He scored two goals in that blowout win over Hunter College back in the first round of this tournament Guerrero gets it ahead to McDonald McDonald looking for Medtard it's knocked away ball comes away to Acosta and this one will trickle over the near sideline for a Cougars throw Long throw for Calderon. Mustangs get it back. Med Tart. Slips it back to Gonzalez. Gonzalez drives it forward towards Tarek Lee. Lee steps through. He gets some space. Shot blocked. Trying to go win it back. Instead, that'll just be played towards the corner. And it'll go out for a Cougars throw. Just not quite connecting. The Mustang so far in this one. Throw by Ellis. Wickheiser gives it back to him. 
Gonzalez slips it back. And well, that one intercepted, but it'll bounce far enough back. But no real damage done. Pushed ahead to Lucas. Now sent towards the corner. Giving chase. Not going to get there, however, was Nicole. Out for a goal kick. Stevenson in the ECACs for the second consecutive year. It's their fourth trip the ECAC D3 Men's Soccer Championships. They are 6-2-1 all-time in matches played, including that championship back in 2010. Jevin Lay knocks that down, now trying to go get it back so he can clear it out. It's still alive. Opportunity shot that was just sort of misstruck by Lucas. He was trying to take a bigger swing at it. Did not get it flush. Easily played by Stella Tano. Wickheiser switches fields. He's got Batita pushing up. Batita not able to hold on to it. It was taken away by Kowal. Now an opportunity for McDonald. Foul called. Foul called 20 yards out, far side of the pitch. So a free kick chance for the Mustangs. Just outside the box. It'll probably look a little bit more like a corner here as McDonald will serve it in. McDonald surveying. Everyone's in place. He keeps it on the turf. No one able to get to it. And so it's gobbled up by Konzelman. And he can try to start something the other way. Both teams with five shots so far in this one. About to hit the 18 minute mark. Scoreless between Stevenson and Kane. Throw in coming, far sideline. Lee will settle. Slips it back. Toed into the box. Dangerous and headed in. What a save by Konzelman. Great look. Pete Wickheiser. Konzelman saw it. Extended. Makes the stop. Keeps it nil-nil. So Stella Tano had to make some great saves in the early going. Konzelman has to make a great save there. Remains scoreless. Taken away by Lucas. Lucas slips it forward. No, sorry, now it's Lucas. Lucas into the box. He's going to get a look oh, right at the last second. Huge slide tackle from Gonzalez. Desperate defending there. Lucas had a tremendous opportunity. Let's go, 
Nicole slides it towards the corner. Nobody running that way, so it'll be a throw for the Mustangs. Stevenson trying to clear it back towards midfield. And that'll go out for another throw along the far sideline. Mentioned earlier, it's been a busy day in Stevenson Athletics. I'm going to tell you more about it, everything that's happened here and away coming up at halftime. Some history earlier today, postseason play. Just a lot going on, preseason tournament action in basketball. That'll be a foul over on the far sideline, and we still have an injured player down as we're going to have our first substitution coming in this match as well. Follow the Mustangs on social media for the latest behind-the-scenes content from all of your favorite teams on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow at Go Mustang Sports. 21.09 gone here in this first half. We have a stoppage due to the injured player. Stevenson getting ready to bring in their first sub of the game. So far, we are even in the shots department, 6-6. Six, six. Neither team has scored. Both goalies have made exceptional saves here in the first half of this ECAC D3 men's soccer semifinal. Injured player was Kowal. He's back up, able to leave the pitch on his own power. We're going to see A.J. Morales enter for the Mustangs. And there was that big collision that called the co caused the co-wall injury. Morales comes on, replacing Diego Guerrero, sophomore from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, by way of Ephrata High School. Morales on the year, six goals for all 12 of his points. Wickheiser, holy, and that one's intercepted. Opportunity for a counter here from the middle of the pitch. Santos, Santos drops it down. Good look at his shot. Stella Tano with another big save as Acosta was free and all by himself. Stella Tano has been up to the task in the early going of this one. It'll be a fourth corner already for the Cougars. Again, over to take it is Nicole. Plays it right in the middle. Stella Tano gets a piece of it. Allows Medtar at the time to clear it away over that far sideline. Santos came in for the injured Kowal. Santos, the senior from Kenilworth, New Jersey, by way of David Brearley High School. A goal and two assists for four points on the season. Slips in and... Turf's doing some funky things. Ball bounced up on Stellatano. He came out to meet it. Seemed like it'd be a simple hop, but that had a lot of heat off that hard bounce. Tarek Lee's going to be called for the foul on that aerial duel down on the other side of midfield. He says he understands. Was checking on the player he was working against. Danny Gian, Gian back up as we have moved past the midway point of this first half. No breakthrough goal just yet. Teams still feeling each other out. Get back here. 
And bring it back close in midfield for the throw. Calderon gets it back. Sends it towards the box. Gonzalez couldn't clear it out on the first header. Gets a second try. Keeps it high and wide. That's the idea. And clears high and wide. Out of the box. Let him hang in the air. Shot blocked. Towed back towards midfield. Perhaps a chance for the Mustangs to counter. Five defenders race back, however, for the Cougars. And get there in a hurry. Kane again trying to push forward. The turn slipped on the turf. That was high but not wide on the clear. Ultimately comes away to Wickheiser. And that'll be a foul called as McDonald was trying to get free. Free kick taken quickly. Push forward. Wickheiser racing towards the corner. He's going to get to it. He's going to have to wait to let help come towards him. Tries to send it back in towards the middle. It's taken away. Holy. I'm sorry, that's Ellis with the long blonde hair. Misfire's looking for Medtart. Chuck downfield towards the corner. Racing over Lucas. Lucas from the near flank. Lay clears it away. McDonald giving it a run, but it'll get all the way down to Konzelman. Now Tarek Lee trying to step in front. Lee didn't have a good first touch, couldn't hold on to the ball. Nicole. Mustangs clear it back out. To the middle. Med Tart up the lead. Taken away. Gonzalez there battling on the, the far sideline. Can't win the ball, but not a good centering pass. And some sloppy passes in general here in the late stages of this first half. And another one, both teams really struggling. Passing percentages would not be numbers that would look very pretty. Nicole slips it wide. Now ahead, Lucas. Combo ball doesn't work. Med Tart. Mustangs trying to figure out how they push it forward. Jevin Lay takes a swing at it, was trying to find Tarek Lee. Couldn't get it there, but Stevenson gets it back in the midfield. Now Morales. Morales saw Lee racing towards the corner, decided not to go for him, and Lee had to slow up so he wasn't offside. Lee turns, looking to get it on goal. Was it deflected? Yep, corner kick. Second corner coming up for the Mustangs. Again, it's Sean McDonald. The sophomore from Far, Hill New Far Hills, New Jersey. Pops it up. Sails over Gonzalez. Cleared out. Ellis racing up. Gets to it. Drops it off. Comes all the way back to Lay. Lay targets McDonald in the corner again. It sails. McDonald can't quite get there. He's fast. He's not that fast. Come 
Goal kick. Played down the near sideline. So it was Wickheiser, Holy, and Ellis who all came out on that substitution for the Mustangs. Dale Boring, the sophomore from Catonsville, Maryland, the former Catonsville Comet, comes on. Declan Marvel, the freshman from Hampstead, out in Carroll County by way of Manchester Valley High School, enters. Also entering Drew Myers for the Mustangs, the junior defender and also former Catonsville Comet. Nicole, back to Carbajal. Played in, sails over everyone, played on a hop by Stella Tano. Stella Tano tries to put some funny English on that one to connect with Dale Boring on an outlet pass, but it's knocked away. Like the idea, you're trying to turn that into some offense. Ball bounces back. Myers. Head to Marvel. Now Tarek Lee with that speed keeps it alive. Lee trying to get back on top of it. Won't be able to get there. Great defensive work from Lopez. Lopesh, the senior defender from Union, New Jersey, holding Tarek Lee at bay, which is not easy to do. Consider how fast the first team all conference performer is. Ball comes to the near side. Lucas. Lucas, that one gets through. Delatano able to keep it at his feet here in minute number 33. Comes all the way back the other way to Konzelman. Down to the near sideline. Slowed down. Now pushed ahead to Nicole. Myers, Marvel, Nicole battling Morales, Morales, no foul, no foul, but they give it right back. Now a chance for a counter, played wide, Lucas, Lucas gets to it, Lucas trying to turn the corner, not being given an inch, right on the edge of the box, knocked off the ball, and the Mustangs get it back, great defending by Batita. Splendid. McDonald with a little bit of a hip check. The officials, for the most part, have let these teams play here in this first half. And that'll go out and will be the fifth corner of the first half for the Cougars.
It's been nickel to take them when they've been down here. He'll do it again. They back up this time. They've got everybody bunched up around the edge of the box for this corner in the 35th minute. Nickel serves it into the middle. Morales heads it away. Get back on top of it. Nickel looking for another cross. This deflected. Racing towards the end line. Cleared away, so it won't be another corner. Nicole gets it back again. Puts it up in the air. Stellatano punches it away, but he's off his line. Shot. Oh, just wide off the deflection. That was dangerous. Stellatano not able to get back on his line. Another corner, served right in front, knocked down. Secondary shot will be well high from Calderon. Mustangs kind of surviving at the moment, playing with fire, haven't been burnt, not yet anyway. Tark Lee checks out. That ball will get through. Picked up by Konzelman. He gets rid of it. Hanging in the air. Marvel not able to knock it down. That's Medtart. Gets it back. Medtart. Trying to figure out where he wants to go with it. Sort of held up. Under nine minutes to play in this first half. Myers slips it forward. Boring. He's trying to get around the defender. Ended up being pushed down. Morales decides there's more real estate on the other side of the pitch. Sean McDonald also checked out. It was James Vess and Will Earhart who came on. Vess, the senior forward from Lexington Park, Maryland, by way of Great Mills. Earhart, one of the young players on this roster, sophomore from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, by way of Camp Hill High School. And the foul will be called on Batita as we hit the 37-minute mark here in this first half. Still scoreless between Stevenson and Kane. ECAC Division Three Men's Soccer Championships. These are the semifinals. Second semifinal coming up later on tonight. Muhlenberg and Widener here at Mustang Stadium. Championship game tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock. Between the two winners. Vess lays it back. Now good through ball. All the way on top of it is Boring. Looking for a cross. Boring. Back to his right. Serves it in front. Oh, racing into the last second. But not able to get ahead on it. Like the effort. But unfortunately did not pay off. Stevenson men's ice hockey team has a big game coming up after you've enjoyed your Thanksgiving leftovers and finished your shopping this Friday. Get to Reisterstown Sportsplex as the Mustangs host defending national champion St. Norbert November 29th at 7 p.m. If you can't make it out to the game, we'll have it for you right here at GoMustangSports.com. Should be an exciting night to be at Reisterstown Sportsplex supporting the Mustangs as they try to take down the defending national champs. Six and a half minutes remaining here in this first half. Both teams still looking for a breakthrough goal. 
By the way, Will Earhart did get his head on it. That's the problem. That's the reason why it was goal kick, is he got his head on it. He just couldn't get it on goal. As we have the injured Cougar still down. Looks like Acosta. And he's going to get some attention. Don't forget that our next broadcast of Stevenson Athletics is coming up later on tonight. Muhlenberg faces Widener right here at Mustang Stadium in the second ECAC men's soccer final or semifinal. It is scheduled for 7.30, but likely to be a little bit after that. Be just shortly after the conclusion of our game right now. That second semifinal, Christian Taylor will be with you for the call here on GoMustangSports.com. Free kick out near the far sideline. Losing his footing was Nicole as he tried to send in a cross. Kept alive, Santos has that one bounced back to him. Felix Perea in for Lucas. Pereira, my apologies. Felix Pereira. Pereira, the freshman from New Brunswick, New Jersey, by way of New Brunswick High School. A goal and four assists on his rookie campaign earned him honorable mention, all NJAC recognition. No foul called. Play on. Comes down to Boring at the near sideline. Boring. Myers. Myers. Oh, just not quite able to connect. He had Vess ahead of him open. Myers as we hit the dangerous final five minutes of this first half. That'll get out along the near sideline. And I will tell you that for the latest news, information, videos, stats, and more for every Stevenson University athletics team and student athlete, visit GoMustangSports.com. Batita got hit with the yellow card just a second ago. So he gets booked. It was in the 39th minute. On to the 41st minute. Winding down in this first half. A lot going on. A lot of chances for both teams. Nothing in the back of the net just yet. Nicole slips it back. Tim Mozingo came on for Batita after the booking. Mozingo, the junior defender from Falston, the former Falston Cougar. Stellatano with some high pressure, able to get rid of it. Taken back by Calderon. Calderon slips it forward. And it comes down to the near side, and Acosta sent on Stellatano. Another good save. He's been doing it all day. Myers knocks it down. Myers pushing forward. Myers wiggles his way through the defense. Good through ball. Opportunity. Shot deflected, however. And easily taken in. 
by Konzelman. James Vess had a tough angle. Did what he could in that situation. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Mustangs have been outshot 12 to 6. Marvel gets it back near sideline. It's fouled. Acosta, not a lot on that, but calls the call. About to hit one minute to play. Do the Mustangs have one more push in them to try to break through in this first half? Instead, they'll give it away. Stellatano's got to race back on his line. And not able to hold on to it was Nicole. Marvel gets it back. He loses it. Now a chance for Blandin. Blandin. He had Calderon wide, gets it to him, approaching 30 seconds to play. Calderon eludes the first defender, Morales. His cross knocked away, pushing up Guillen. Guillen just sort of lets one fly, and Stellatano covers that one up. That was not a particularly good shot. Ten seconds left. And that will be how the first half comes to a close. Five corners, 13 shots for the Cougars in the first 45 minutes. Two corners, six shots for the Mustangs. Neither team finding the back of the net. It is halftime in the ECAC Division Three men's soccer semifinals, and we are scoreless at Mustang Stadium. This is GoMustangSports.com. Getting ready for the start of the second half between Stevenson and Kane here in the ECAC Division Three men's soccer semifinals. Mustangs trying to get on the board. They had to hold their breath a few times in the first half. The best chances belong to the Cougars. More chances belonging to the Cougars. The 13-7 advantage in the shots department, but neither team able to get on the board. So we will switch sides here in the second half and try again, see if we can't come away with a winner in regulation. The Mustang Club is an exciting new initiative in support of student-athletes at Stevenson University. Our goal is to provide unparalleled opportunities for our athletes by embracing and engaging a community of passionate supporters. Funds raised through the Mustang Club will directly impact the student-athlete experience and help provide resources needed to enrich the lives of our Mustangs. To find out more and to join the Mustang Club, visit GoMustangSports.com slash Mustang Club. Stevenson in the white shirts, the white shorts, the green numerals. They will be moving left to right on your internet dial here in this second half. Cougars of Kane University, the blue and white shirts, the blue shorts, white numerals. They will touch it first, and they will move from right to left. It is a frigid day in Owings Mills. Glenn Clark with you from Mustang Stadium here on GoMustangSports.com. Game two of our triple header. Still to come, the second semifinal. Widener and Muhlenberg. Christian Taylor will bring it to you after the conclusion of this one. Teams back on the pitch. Huddling up. Maybe trying to trap body heat at the moment. It is cold. Not really windy. That hasn't been much of an impact. A slight breeze at times, but it is just downright cold 
winter type of cold in the Baltimore area today. Teams have had to deal with it. Obviously, when you're running, as much as these guys are running, at some point it doesn't affect you. But coming out to start the half after being in the locker room, it can have an impact. You know who can have an impact is MC McFadden. I know that much. You're going to come over here and say hello. You're going to throw this headset on. You're going to chat with us for a second. MC McFadden, the legend, has joined us here in the broadcast booth. What's going on, MC? Oh, I, I'm, I always, we got to get your mic turned on. Hang on a second. I'll get that taken away as we are underway to start this second half. MC McFadden, of course, my broadcast partner for Stevenson Lacrosse. But more importantly, she is um, assistant athletic director, strength and conditioning coach, assistant to the regional manager. Correct. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought it was. Exactly <laughs> what I thought it was. It's so good to see you, MC. What's going on? I, you decided it was too cold out there. You needed to come up and Oh, no, I've been in the press box of the whole time. You Are you have. kidding? I am soft when it comes to the weather. Of, I'll admit that. Of course you have. <laughs> A special weekend here at Stevenson. No doubt. Uh, not only do we have the bowl game earlier on for the Stevenson football team, but a national championship today for Patrick Watson of Stevenson Cross Country. Now you have the men's soccer team playing for their first. Well, they've they got to win the night in order to get there, but an opportunity to win their first ECAC. Tarek Lee can't get to that ball since 2010. Pretty special time here at Stevenson University. Pretty successful. Yes. <laughs> men's hockey just won 6-1 to one over Newman. Just wrapped up that game. they got a big game coming up on Friday against the defending national champions. They do. It's there's a lot going on, a lot of success going on around here. Matt Stellatano can't hang on to that one, so it's going to turn into a corner kick. That shot from Santos. This will be the seventh corner kick tonight for the Cougars. What do you make of what you've seen from the Stevenson men's soccer team? I think we've had some good opportunities. I just wish they could put it in the back of the net. How about that? That would be nice. It would be Wouldn't helpful. Be nice? I have heard you need to do that in order to win. Although, oddly, in the, play in the playoffs, you actually don't have to do it in order to win. You can not score a goal and still win. That's the neat part about you know, like Normally, we do that bit where you're like, you can't, if you don't score, you can't win. Yeah. And in the playoffs, they screw that all up <laughs> for us. <laughs> so, hopefully, we'll do that and move on to tomorrow. Felipe Lucas takes the corner. No threat. Knocked away. And they will recollect Tarek Lee. He is so fast, Tarek Lee. He is so fast. He is fast. Uh, you've been working with this, this team? The uh, men's soccer is one of my teams. You know, I actually traveled to Spain with them this summer. Oh, and you know what? Tell me about how much that trip did because we talked to uh, Graham at the beginning of the year about this. They had some lofty goals coming into this season. They wanted to get to the NCAA tournament, couldn't quite do that, but it was really important then to get to the postseason and continue the growth that they've seen from this program now year three under Graham Miller. How important was that experience that they had in Spain and sort of growing together as a group? It was really fun. So I think that it was great for them. It was a big bonding opportunity. Um, they played a lot of really tough competition, as you can imagine, in Spain. Uh, but they held it together. I mean, it was tough. They played some teams that were that, that really – really had been playing together for some club teams that had been playing together for a long time. They played a junior national team, so it was difficult. But uh, they had a good time with each other, and I think that was probably really important coming into the start of their season. Again, service into the box, knocked away. The Mustangs trying to clear. And see, you know, you can speak so much to what it is that Graham Miller has done since no doubt. taking over this program. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all knew where they were just a few years ago to get them to the place where they are now. I mean, as Tarek Lee tries to turn on the Jets, slow down. Play continues. Now Medtart looking for it, can't find it. It pops through to this near corner. Wickheiser can't get there. But you can speak to how the entire culture has changed, just everything about what has gone on since Graham Miller has moved over to the men's soccer program after a very successful run as the women's soccer head coach. Right, no doubt about that. So Graham has just really set the bar high for these guys. And uh, they really just followed suit. So I've definitely seen a culture shift um, in their work ethic and in what is expected of them. And it's, it's been very refreshing, actually. Pete Wickheiser didn't have much on that shot. It was easily handled by Konzelman. And see, I think that word, what's expected of them, expectations is what really jumps out at me, is they came into this year with expectations. Mm. This wasn't a hey, let's see what happens. It's we have true goals, things that we are going to try to accomplish as a program. That shot, oh, what a rip, but just wide from Nicole. My word, he has pulled off some absolute fastballs 
That one back in the first half where he was falling away from the ball and still managed to twist it on goal. That one just missed the opposite post. Alex Nicole, an impressive junior. I can't believe he only has three goals on the season with a rifle like that. Yeah, he really shoots hard. My We're sitting word. in the press box going, oh, you know, doing one of those, ooh. Well, and, <laughs> and in situations too, MC, where you're like, man, eh, maybe you can get that one somewhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. No, we want that on the other end of the field. Correct. Could use a few more of those. Yeah, we have plenty of guys who can pull the trigger at the other end of the field. They just need to, they'll do so. So tell me some fun tidbits about some of these men's soccer players. Tell me some, some things that you've learned about these guys from working with them this season. So um, let me think of what I can talk about on air. Mm. <laughs> the I did go to Spain with them for a week. The, sancti <laughs> the, the sanctity of the uh, of MC's workout room yeah. and her and her booty jams. What stays, what's right. Big booty. Big, big booty. booty. Big booty jam. The big booty mix is what's on a constant cycle. What like, happens in the gym stays in the gym. I've heard that over the years. I actually meant to call you today. I actually had to work out at home because I didn't know if you are going to be here to let me into the gym oh, today. So sorry. I wasn't. I woke up bright and early. You see, I ran a, ran a, a 10K last week. Yeah, I saw that. What the hell's going on in the world? I don't world? know. What is going on with you? It's really weird. Ran the whole thing, too. I don't know what's happening. I might run a half marathon next year. Danny Guillen slips it forward. Now he gets it back. Good combo ball. Looking for a cross. That's going to be another corner. The eighth of the game for the Cougars. They are breaking down the Mustangs' defense nicely. Stevenson just trying to hold on, and Matt Stellatano. Oh, he's my gosh. He's had to come up you really know, big. I was thinking about him in the first half as I was watching, and I was thinking it's unbelievable he's only a sophomore. It's truly incredible. He already owns the school record I'm, for most shutouts. It's ridiculous. He plays like he's a senior. Nicole set to take this corner. Sends it right in. Stellatano knocks it away. Still needs to be cleared out. Out of the ball continues. Contact, no foul. You're not going to get that call in that situation. It would have been a penalty kick. Well, they're in some serious, nasty weather right now, aren't they? It's so miserable out there. I know. <laughs> Those it's poor guys so and miserable. all the fans. Lots of umbrellas up, but there's a lot of fans down there being pretty tough, I might add. Oh, God, bless them. Bless them bless for coming them. out I to watch support. Foot, I watched football on Roku today. <laughs> 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 there was no way I was sitting through two games like that. I uh, typically like when we go down to do our post-game interviews, I try to um, take the jacket off so I can have the Stevenson-branded gear on mm -hmm. for the post-game interview. I said today, that will not be no, happening. No, heck no. That will not be happening for our post-game interview here for football. MC, who are you working with for the, uh, the winter? Who are your teams? So... Uh, funny you should ask that. I seem to have all of the winter teams, I feel. Oh, like. yeah. Yeah, because I have both basketballs, both ice hockeys. That's, yeah, that's basically all the winter And men's volleyball. Teams. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. So when we're working over winter break, I think I'm the one that's working the hardest. Sean McDonald's cross can't find a target. It's covered up by Konzelman. So what's jumped out at you in working with those winter teams so far? Well, they're all fun to work with. It's... it's um, I tell you what's been really fun is to watch. So the, the ice hockey's always have a really great work ethic because, you know, lifting and, and strength training is a very big part of their culture. So I never have to develop that. What's been really fun is watching men's basketball and their development this year. They have a lot of new guys, and they, they have really come in and really worked hard and uh, know the value of strength training too. And, and typically uh, I might, and I think their coaches would say this, lifting is not their favorite thing. They, hmm. you know, basketball players want to shoot. They want to be in the gym, the other gym, the gymnasium. And, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. right, that gym. Um, yeah, that gym. And, um, but they've, they've been doing a really great job and, and made some really great gains. So I'm uh, excited to watch them. You know, I'm glad you bring this up. I happen to notice that Mark Terrell looked a little leaner coming Mark into Terrell the season. Mark Terrell looks great. Yeah, he's, he's really done a good job of getting in, back into shape and, uh, and uh, has been joined by a bunch of freshmen who, and, you know, a transfer too. Uh, so that one of those transfers, Norman Hughes. Yes. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. That's no foul. Instead, it's just going to be a throw-in at the near sideline. Pete Wickheiser working over there in the flank. Norman Hughes, and he got some high praise from Gary Stewart when we chatted last weekend. He said might be one of the most talented players to come into the program this way he's ever had yeah he is very talented he too is you know he's a very strong young man he came in with that work ethic also and uh, we call him worm you might want to know that for Ooh, when you do I basketball did not know we that. call him worm dylan holy with that patented long throw that's what he does it's still alive 
Stepping up to it, Batita tries to take a shot, but cannot get that anywhere near on goal. And That's it's tough with his left foot. It's funny because I asked Worm, Worm, do you mind that nickname? And he goes, no, I came with that. Well, it is, <laughs> it's going to stick now, of course. It, the, it, it has stuck. The original Worm was uh, Dennis Rodman. Norman Hughes, not exactly like Dennis no, Rodman. Thank the Lord. <laughs> thank um, the Lord. Neither as a player or a person. Right. They're different, obviously, of course, Dennis Rodman being, oh, and we're going to have a booking here. The yellow's going to come out for Felipe mm -hmm. Lucas in the 55th minute. I thought that was just sort of an aggressive foul, but officials decide that is worthy of a booking. And so, yellow card comes out for Felipe Lucas, who, of course, had a yellow in the first half on Batita. Sets up a free kick for the Mustangs, about 50 yards out. DR Medtard is going to take. How about the career DR Medtard has had here at Stevenson NC? And he is such a great young man. He, uh, he is a really a great team leader. His work ethic is unparalleled, and we're going to miss him big time when he graduates. You know what he did tonight? He set a new record. 81 career games played, the most in Stevenson soccer history. Wow. doesn't surprise me. He had even Sean Scarsaletta. Now he has passed Sean for the career record for most games played. He had already broken Scarsaletta's career starts record last week. Of course, had two goals in the first round game against Westminster, including the game winner in the 83rd minute. He has been such a significant part as Tarek Lee's taken down. No foul called. It was ball first. It's been such a significant part of this turnaround with Graham Miller and this men's soccer program. Just a stalwart, right? Like Oh, no, there's no doubt about that. And, and Tarek Lee and Jay Smith get a lot of the attention. They're very flashy, and they're incredible players, and it's understandable. But DR Medtart is so solid, racing onto this ball. Stellatano comes all the way out, just gets a piece of it. Breathing down his neck was Felipe Lucas. That is so tough to make a decision like that. Once you commit, you got to go. You have to. And <laughs> yeah. you have to make the yeah. play. Or he would have been in no man's land. So Correct. he did. He made a great play. Guillen slips it back to Lucas. Lucas edging towards the box. That's going to be a ninth corner on the night for the Cougars. Whew. At some point. You know, I've seen games where there have been teams that have, you know, had 12, 13 corners that don't score a goal. But, boy, you just keep giving them chance after chance on these juicy set pieces. This is a great shot right here on the screen. Oh, look at that it shot. It is really coming down. You oh can't see it. It doesn't look like that from up here on the no, it doesn't. fifth floor. You don't get a sense for just how awful that must feel. And Nicole... Sends that right in front. Knocked away by Stellatano. A chance. That was a tough turnaround look for Alexander. Got to swing your entire body around on that one. It's not easy to do. It's going to come away to Lee. Opportunity for a two-on-one. He's got Medtart in front. Lee has to swing it out wide to get around the defender. That allows the Cougars to get back defensively. Foul? Yeah, I expect the foul call. Just outside the box. So it'll be a free kick from there. It'll look a little bit like a corner where that free kick is going to come from. Boy, he had Medtart for a second. But the defender was just a little too close for him to try to thread the needle on that one. Yeah, they've taken Tark down a lot tonight. That, well, that's what you, <laughs> that's what you do. when you To look a at threat. The, correct. <laughs> yes, to a scoring threat. You look at the scouting report, you say, hey, that guy that just scored mm. two goals last week, that guy that's faster than everybody else on the pitch. There is no doubt. He is... A fast young man. What do we do about him? Say, well, you're going to have to Whatever you need, it. whatever yep. you have to. Exactly right. right. Medtart takes the free kick, sends it right in front, and it's going to oh. be covered up by Konzelman. There was a chance there briefly right in front of the goal. Sean McDonald not able to get to it. Gonzalez was up there as well. Neither one of them able to get that breakthrough tally. Oh, that great free kick from DR Medtart. So what else is going on in your world, MC McFadden? In my world, so... You're you doing Thanksgiving in California? I am. I was just going to tell you that. Figured that'd be the case. Great effort by Batita shepherding that one over the yeah, end line. Visiting my son again. If you remember last year, you were doing basketball games, and I was texting you from I California. I remember it yes. well. I yes. remember it well. 
Very cool. Where mm-hmm. in California? Um, Santa Monica. So we leave Tuesday. It's a tough life. Mm. God, just feel for you, you know. It's, I, I don't know how you survive. Well, it's hard when your child's that far away from you. So oh, it's, it's okay. nice now that we get to. The, now yeah, now I'm pulling on the party. heartstrings now Jeez. a little bit. Now we get out in front of Lee. Medtart won't be able to get there. It didn't matter. Flag was up. Offsides the call. Oh, no, a foul behind the play. I see way back here. Foul was called, so it'll be a free kick for the Mustangs. Missed that entirely. I think we're at the point in the semester with Thanksgiving being so late that we're all really looking forward to a little break. Yeah, weird how that mm. worked out this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, we fly back on December 1st, so that's crazy. I'm even giving myself the weekend off. I'm making Christian Taylor work all the games next weekend. It's just hockey next weekend. Just hockey. I know we've had, hockey well, oh, is so on. busy. No, wait a second. We've had the last couple of weekends, it seems like we've had about six different oh my, sports going on. We have. It's been so busy with the basketball, everybody in full swing. And then when we come back from... from it's a, hard. That one headed towards yeah. the goal and a breakthrough. A breakthrough in the 60th minute. The service from Medtart. The finish. Dylan Holy. And in the pouring rain, the Mustangs go on top 1-0. We were just talking about DR Medtart a minute ago, MC. And I tell you, Holy, I call him Holy Dylan. Oh, not Dylan Holy. I, I like it. Him, I call him Holy Dylan all the time. So I like it. Dylan is also a great team leader and a great leader by example and works so hard. So I'm so happy to see that for him. Junior captain heading it home. His second goal on the season now has seven points. Give DR Medtart the assist. His third assist on the year and his 13th point. And Stevenson is on top one nil. That means you can't leave because you brought him good luck, MC. That's just the way that goes. <laughs> Everybody well, I might have to that. leave you at some point. I, mm. I ditched my husband in the press box. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm going to go say hi to Glenn. Did, did he not know how this was going to go? He's <laughs> well, been around. Well, we I knew how it was going to go, but I just didn't mention that. <laughs> but he, he's, been do- he's been around the two of us long enough to know what yeah, was going to happen. There is no doubt about that. Nicole pushes forward. So one nil, Mustangs on top now. They got to hold on. Nicole, what a run. Finally. Never actually lost possession. He's a very talented young man. It's By the way, you see the cannon he has, and then you see his speed mm-hmm. weaving through defenders there. He brings every... I have no idea how he's had just three goals and an assist on the season and wasn't an all-conference player. Watching him, he is spectacular. Well, he's certainly having himself a night. Whether he had it all season or not, I don't know. But he's ha- And he's got great size, too. Yeah. So he's very strong. It's a little bit, like he's only 5'7", but 175, and he's built well. He's built very well. When you see him up close on the screen, it's, wow, for a soccer player, they're a little bit more lanky than that normally. Sort of like Dylan Holy. Mm, It's a good comparison. Mm -hmm. It's a very good comparison. You speak to his leadership, right? He's a junior who was elected captain of this team. He was a sophomore captain. That's right. Yeah. which, Which now there's another sophomore captain this year because Matt Stellatano was also named as a captain. As he should be. The way he anchors that defense, and it's think about incredible. It, by the way, MC, everything he had to do in the first half, right? So now the attention's on the goal scorer, but the Mustangs could easily have been behind by a goal or two in this game. Matt Stellatano making play after play in the first half in order to protect that scoreless game and get them into this position where Dylan Holy could get them on top. Still a lot of soccer to be played, obviously, but Stellatano deserves so much credit. So much credit. He's an amazing athlete. And still going to be here for a couple of years. And we're so lucky to have him for that much longer. And the goals will only get loftier, right? Right. Like oh, there's is, no doubt. This is the way it works. Your goal coming into this year was the playoffs, was, you know, postseason. Now the goal becomes we got to figure out a way to get past Messiah moving forward. Well, more than one of our teams has to figure out how it, to get past Messiah. It's certainly a story. <laughs> Women's lacrosse every year, yes, too. You're no right doubt about, about that. that. Ends up being a storyline every year. It's field not hockey, easy. Field women's hockey, women's soccer, yeah, all of them. I mean, Messiah is definitely great in the field sports. Petita can't hold on to it. Taken back by Alexander. Try to turn it the other way. Mustangs on top, 1-0. Dylan Holy from DR Medtar. Glenn Clark, MC McFadden. <laughs> By surprise. Yeah, the cameo <laughs> appearance. And she is here. 
You know, I love I love a lot of things about you, MC. But what I love most is how you support all of these student athletes that you work with and that you know so well. You're not here working today. No, You're just I'm hanging not. out to support these teams. Well, I wasn't at least until I came in to say hello to you. Yeah, but you're <laughs> not you're not getting paid for this either. No. So, <laughs> well, I never do, Glenn. <laughs> Ian, Ian loses it. Felipe Lucas pushes up. No, but I've always appreciated that. that it you, is. It's that, fun that you come out for games when you know you could be doing a lot of things, and you support. And and it's why you're so loved on this campus. It's why everyone thinks so highly of you, and they're so happy to see you because you do these things that you don't have to do to come out and support these teams. Well, I appreciate that. But you know, it's really fun to come out and support the kids that you work with. You know, day in and day out, and and I think that it's important that they know that you care about them, and I do. I, I can tell that, and everybody can tell that, is that's a long, twisting shot that will be nowhere near on goal from Guillen. will turn into a goal kick. And we hear that all the time from everybody on social media. We always have parents and families that are watching and listening in, and they know how much you mean and how much you work with these young men and women in order to have them in the best shape they can be in as they try to win championships here at Stevenson University. Now two national championships after Patrick Watson wins. So exciting. I'm so excited it's so for cool. him. It's so cool. It is amazing. He's an amazing young man. Did you see his time having just run a 10K? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's absurd. 24 minutes that for was, that five was, miles. That was my time for a 5K. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that's, it's, it's wild, isn't it? I mean, that's an amazing. And, you know, it's funny because I was talking to Dave Burdan. Uh, the day before they mm -hmm. left to travel, and um, he said, you know, I just, I feel great about this. He said, Patrick has more in him than, than, that, than he showed in the regionals, and he goes, and he's feeling so good right now. He goes, I just really think he's going to do great things this weekend, and whether he expected a national championship or not, I don't know, but I'm very excited for Dave and his program. One by nearly six seconds that cross-country national championship today down in Louisville, Kentucky, the second ever national championship in Stevenson Athletics history. I'm pretty sure they're celebrating down there tonight. I imagine that's the case. <laughs> I know. Uh, I heard the Bourbon Trail mentioned once or twice before, da uh, before I, Dave I, left. Not, not every, not the students. The no, students I'm thinking. Be, I'm thinking yeah. actually maybe Patrick Watson's parents. Correct. <laughs> that one comes all the way through to Stella Tano. Um, and it would be well deserved. No, no question about mm -hmm. that. A fun place to be. One of my favorite cities, by the way, in the country. Um, I know Emily Gates also ran the day in she the did. women's cross country and had a good run as well. By the way, the Johns Hopkins women's team won the team national championship. Oh, they did. I didn't see that. So it's been a good day for Johns Hopkins. It sure has been. As a program as well. Yeah. I think, And it's cool. So you... you uh, posted on facebook earlier what a neat day for football oh, in the area it's so cool yeah it's, it is so cool it's so cool that it, it worked so out cool. that way i you know it's funny i was talking to both um you know uh ernie larasa who's the uh sports information director at johns hopkins mm -hmm. it's something that greg royce and i talked about last week you know there you were excited because next year you're going to get those two teams playing yes. for the first time yes. right and it was mm -hmm. going to create a great atmosphere mm -hmm. but i don't know for a postseason game what more could you ask for than it's a chance? really neat and then the other thing, too, is that because the high school season ended for so many teams, there's still a few that are alive into the semifinals. Right. More of a chance for some of the coaches that coach some of these players to get out here today and support them. So many local players on both rosters. Just think a really special atmosphere. And you could tell that there were a lot of fans from both schools that were here today, despite the fact that it was freezing. Right. There was a great crowd on hand for the centennial mac bowl game between stevenson and johns hopkins and i was thinking too that uh, because the weather was so poor today that when we play them next year it's going to be really fun we'll play them earlier yeah, that game might be a, like a 95 degree day the, right right, that, right and and it will probably really crush the crowd next year right. <laughs> seriously free kick coming that's a great point I've, yeah I've, it'll be really it'll be a really fun atmosphere and I, I hope that creates a really great local rivalry football really doesn't have that so obviously the the frostburg thing existed for some time but frostburg moved up to d2 right and right so, we lost that and so hopkins a great replacement for that school separated by all of what nine miles well that makes it even better yeah it's correct frostburg out mm -hmm. west this is this is truly a baltimore baltimore thing 
And just a cool day for all of local football. A neat game uh, earlier today. Unfortunately, didn't go the Mustangs' way. No. But Ryan Sedgwick, their quarterback, back next season. And what a great quarterback he's been for us this year. He broke the single-season passing yards record today here at Stevenson. Lucas fouled about 30 yards out, so that will be a threatening spot for a free kick for the Cougars looking for an equalizer. Here as we're about to hit the 68-minute mark, Lucas has been all over the place today. We'll see who takes this free kick. It'll be moved back a couple of yards, so about 32 yards out, but right in the middle of the pitch. I still think that they might try to go on goal. You know, it's it's out, but it's not so far out that I think it'd be a bad idea to try to put this one right on net. Lucas will take a few steps back. Had two goals. In the first round, Lucas tries to bend it in. It's knocked down and cleared away. You know, the beauty of this soccer team is there's so many freshmen and sophomores on this team. And they're just going to keep getting better and better year after year. There's no doubt about that, MC. This is its a great story. It's a remarkable thing that's happened here. Well, and Graham's done such a job with the recruiting he brought in a very big class, freshman class, this year. And uh, it's just going to keep getting better and better. So that'll be played out over the near sideline. All right, before I let you go back mm -hmm. and, and, and join your husband. And make sure he knows I'm still alive. Correct. Before Honey, I do sorry, that. I'm going to the ladies' room. Uh, <laughs> we will, of course, be together for lacrosse in the spring. Give me a couple of thoughts on both the men's and the women's teams. Well, you know, it's funny you should ask me that. So yesterday... Today Saturday, right? Yesterday, I had women's lacrosse for their last lift um, before Thanksgiving. I'll, I'll see them again when they get back from the break. But, uh, you know, we talked about lofty goals. And, you know, their goal is to, to get a MAC championship and get back to the NCAAs. And their se the seniors on that team are just really, really excited for the opportunity to do that. It came so close a year ago. So close a year ago. And, you know, they, they remember that. And then they remember the taste in their mouths. And uh, they just... I think they're going to be really good this year. I just really do. They've got some good freshmen, but the kids that returned to that team are tremendous athletes, um, as well as on the men's side. They, too, have some good freshmen that came in and, and a lot of new faces, and they've been working very hard all fall. Tenth corner of the night for Santos. I, he hasn't taken all ten, but tenth for the Cougars. Santos will take this one near post, knocked away. Mustangs will try to clear it out. Oh, kept alive. Shot blocked, and that'll go out towards midfield. All right, MC McFadden. All right. I Glenn love Clark. you. I appreciate you coming up to hang out Just with wanted us. to say hey. Thank you so much, and we will see you all throughout. Happy Thanksgiving. Tell your husband and your son I said the same. Will do. And you. Yeah, I, w I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Love you, MC. MC McFadden checking in with us here on GoMustangSports.com. Of course, such an important part of this Stevenson University Athletics Department and my partner for Stevenson Lacrosse. Love having her around. Mustangs on top as we move past the midway point of this second half. Free kick coming after the foul call. 71 minutes gone by, still 19 to play, so still time for the Cougars. Had to be deflated by allowing the goal, considering they had had the better of the run of play. That'll be taken easily by Konzelman. Can they figure out a combination to equalize? Or will the Mustangs be hosting the ECAC championship match tomorrow? Foul on lay, so a free kick. About 40 yards out. It'll be taken, looks like Carbajal is going to be the one to take this. No, he's going to put it down and walk away. And they're going to push up a little bit. They're going to send Alexander up, kind of treat this a little bit more like a corner, trying to get this into danger, see if somebody can't knock it home. Waiting for a whistle. Into the box. 
headed away. Who's that out off of? It's out off of the Mustang, so how about an 11th corner? Santos will race over to take another one. 11 corners on the night for the Cougars. They trail 1 0 here in the 73rd minute, right in front, headed away, and ooh, there was a juicy rebound opportunity to be had. Good defending by Gonzalez to prevent that. Headed out of the box. Mustangs still need to get out of trouble in general. And foul's going to be called, so it'll be a free kick for Stevenson. It'll be Stella Tano to take this free kick. Stevenson leading 1-0 despite being outshot 18-10. Morales slips it down. Opportunity here. Glady. Glady from the near flank. Serves it on. Nobody home. It's a good looking run. Good looking cross. Just nobody there to do anything with it. Turn. It's ahead to Santos. Matthew Glady, the junior from Douglasville, Pennsylvania. We've seen him more and more as the season has gone on. And Lucas just forgets the ball. Morales tries to slip a direct ball through. He was imagining Brian Ventura moving towards the middle of the pitch. Ventura, the sophomore from Olney by way of Blake, was trying to go towards the flank. Not able to get there. Mustang's in a position where perhaps a second goal ices it at this point. We're approaching 15 minutes to play. Alexander has to retreat, slip it back to his goalie. Late stages of this one. Don't forget, the Stevenson women's basketball team opened the season with four straight road games. They need your support for their home opener next Sunday. Go to Owings Mills Gymnasium December 1st at 4 p.m., as the Mustangs battle Christopher Newport, if you can't be there, we'll have the game for you right here at GoMustangSports.com. 1-0 Mustangs. Guillen wins it. Gets it ahead to Lucas. Cross knocked down and cleared out by Gonzalez. Run continues into the box, and whew, it's good shielding. Nick Ellis using his whole body. It gets tough. Once you get to that edge of the box, you don't want to do anything that could turn into a foul. Give up a potential penalty kick. Good shielding. Now the turn. Ball on the turf. Needs to be cleared away. Lucas nearly gets to it. Settled on by Guillen. Guillen service deflected, and that's going to bounce around and bounce out over the near sideline. Throw taken quickly by Guillen. Hops to the corner. Batita trying to protect it to get it to the end line. It won't get there. Instead, who's it out off of? It's out off of Batita. It will be corner kick number 12. Yeesh. It's a staggering number. This one they keep close. Still hopping around, shot deflected, bounces back. Cleared out. Guillen tracks it down, keeps it alive. 
And that one got out. It'll go back to the Mustangs. The official Stevenson Athletics podcast is Stable Talk, hosted by Sam Murray and our own Joe Wamba. New episodes every Tuesday featuring 30-minute conversations with different student-athletes. Stable Talk allows listeners to get to know each student-athlete more in-depth, along with segments like Mustang Superlatives and Stampede. This week's episode features women's ice hockey senior Jordan Perello. Find Stable Talk on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and SoundCloud, and follow the show on Twitter at Stable underscore Talk. Great moves by Lucas. Gets a shot off, and that somehow finds the back netting just bent to tuck inside the far post. Stella Tano saw it, thought it was going wide, and it is an equalizer for Felipe Lucas in the 78th minute. Brand new game. Felipe Lucas is team leading 10th goal of the season. We want to watch this one more time. He just had enough space to get the ball off his foot. Stella Tano was off his line, thought it was wide. That's the signal he gives. Don't have to touch it. And he can't believe that ball curled back inside the post. So we're even again. 1-1. Mustangs have work to do. Somebody tell MC she's got to come back down here. That's the way it works. Unbelievable. So, let's see what the Mustangs have in store. Tark Lee can't get to that ball. That'll be a goal kick. Thought they might be able to cruise towards the championship match tomorrow after going on top 1-0. Best laid plans. They got work to do in these closing minutes. They're going to need a second goal or might have to play all the way to a penalty kick shootout. We will see. Get it back here. Head down. Ball sent on, and oh my, that was dangerous. Konzelman plucks it out of the air, but loses it briefly. Could have been a great chance to clean up the trash. Instead, he finds it. Obviously, you have to protect it in a situation like that. You can't carry the ball with you over the line. Oh, it's still a goal. Stevenson needs to get possession back. They had been playing with fire all night. Finally, on the 20th shot, the Cougars of Kane University break through. Get the equalizer. Holy, that one's out. Throwing coming near sideline. Knocked away, Medtart will chase it down. Slips it out wide, Ellis pushing up. Not a Marvel in the middle. Marvel has a look. Marvel pulls the trigger, but that is not on target. Goal kick. 81st minute here at Mustang Stadium. Middle of the pitch, not holding on to it, was McDonald. So, free kick. Another chance to put it into danger. They're about to hit 81 minutes exactly. It'll be Jevin Lay to take the free kick. That 
couple of changes. He's coming off Phil Lopez. Alexander back in. Lay about 53 yards out to the edge of the box, up in the air. McDonald trying to win it, can't control it. Petita gets a piece of it, but the Cougars are able to get it out of trouble. Now an opportunity for them to push. Carbajal slides it back the middle. Santos, now a chance for a shot, and that one will be easily handled. Acosta just shot it right into the body of Stella Tano. Stella Tano boots it away. Still eight and a half minutes remaining in regulation. McDonald and try to get it back to him. Medtart not able to connect on the pass. All the way to the corner. Gonzalez slips it towards the middle, and that's nearly a disastrous giveaway. Ellis just able to get rid of that. What a mess that was shaping up to be. Lucas gets free. Lucas just scored a goal a minute ago. Lucas, oh, great digging in from Batita, playing with a yellow, but he gives it right back. Shot knocked away. It's going to be a 13th corner. And now the Cougars are looking for what could be a winner to send them to the championship match tomorrow. Carbajal set to take this one. Don't forget that you can watch every Stevenson men's and women's basketball and men's and women's ice hockey game this season live and on demand at GoMustangSports.tv or the Stevenson Mustangs Athletics apps on Roku, Apple TV OS, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Carbajal sends it in, middle of the pitch, headed in. Stellatano plucks it out of the air. Stay even. Tarek Lee slips it down to Medtart. I'm oh, sorry, that's Marvel. Marvel sends it back towards the middle of the pitch. He was looking for Lee. Couldn't connect. Guillen and Santos come out. Of course, they trade Santos for Santos, replacing Nick Santos with Kenny Santos. It's actually Jake Santos who came out in favor of Kenny Santos. I actually don't think they're related, oddly enough. Kenny Santos, the freshman from Kearney, New Jersey. And foul out wide. Who's it on? It's on blue. So it'll be a free kick as Tarek Lee was trying to race to that ball. Nick Kovac also into the match, the sophomore midfielder from Bloomfield, New Jersey, replacing Guillen. So another free kick for the Mustangs as we approach these final five minutes. It'll be Medtart to take it. Medtart assisted on the goal that put Stevenson on top 1-0. Medtart gets it in front, but before any of the Mustangs runners could get to it, it's taken away by Konzelman. Marvel slows down that process just enough for Batita to step up and get on top of that ball. Batita was trying to somehow slip it forward to Lee, but there were too many blue shirts in his way. Marvel held up. He gets possession back. Alexander. Actually, sorry, that's Pereira, number 19. Felix Pereira, who settled. We are into the ever-dangerous final five minutes. 
I don't have exact math, but I can tell you, business seems to pick up in the first and the final five minutes of each half. It's sort of the nature of the sport. Lose your edge a little bit. Teams start to press. Ooh, and we got a bit of a WrestleMania situation. It was a big-time takedown. Foul called on Medtart. Free kick belongs to the Cougars. Under four minutes to play in regulation. So the way it'll work, if nobody scores the next four minutes, or if somehow both teams do, then we'll play on to extra time, just like we typically would in the regular season. Extra time will be exactly the same. Up to 20 minutes. Golden goal soccer. If nobody scores in that process, the difference in the postseason is we move to PKs. Ball lingers on the end line, but Batita couldn't get to it. Instead, it's going to be a 14th corner. It's Carbajal, second team all conference in the end, Jack. Nope, he's going to put it down, and he's going to run off of it. This 14th corner here in the 88th minute. So instead it'll be Nicole. Oh, he's played so well tonight. Nicole, far post, headed away. Lee heads it forward. He was maybe trying to start something instead. Big shot. It's blocked down. Trying to turn on it is Lucas. He didn't have an angle. Get the shot off. Now he tries to go out wide. Pereira looking for a cross, intercepted, and Ellis will sweep it out. Tarek Lee gets back on his feet. He has received so much tension every time he's touched the ball. Into the box, good turn, shot from Carbajal, and Kane goes on top in the 88th minute. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Calvin Carbajal. Second goal of the season. Oh, was Acosta? I thought that was 26. No, nope, you're right. It's Acosta. My apologies. Max Acosta, our player to watch, scores the winner. Tenth goal of the season, tied for the team lead. Now, we don't know that it's the winner yet. There's still two minutes left. Let me be careful. Still two minutes left. Mustangs still have a chance here to keep the season alive. They're going to have to push everybody forward. Tarek Lee, was he on side? They say yes. He gets to it, gets a shot off. It's deflected, however. Bounces right back. McDonald trying to swing it ahead. Lots of contact. Kind of getting into desperate moments here. Acosta, that 10th goal, now has 23 points on the season. 2-1. 90 seconds remaining. Cougars able to clear it out. That's all that separates them from a date with the winner of the second semifinal, Widener and Muhlenberg, in the championship match tomorrow here at Mustang Stadium. Stevenson had a 1-0 lead here in the second half, and a goofy goal equalized. Oh, Tarek Lee. Oh, could not have asked for a better look right in front. It's not able to get his foot on it. Lucas tracks it down. See if he tries to get to the corner here with just 40 seconds left. That's exactly where he's headed. And why wouldn't he? Play keep away. That's a corner. 
Oh, it's a goal kick. Okay, goal kick. 28 seconds. They're going to stop the clock for this substitution. And then the Mustangs are going to have to throw everything, the kitchen sink, and then borrow somebody else's kitchen sink in order to try to figure out a way to get the ball in the back of the net in these final 28 seconds where their season will come to an end. Bitter pill to swallow. Batita trying to track it down, and this is going to do it. Acosta will have a chance to add one more. Now, good defending will prevent that in the closing seconds, but it's not going to matter. Just 10 seconds left, not enough time. Heartbreak for the Mustangs here tonight at Mustang Stadium. They fall to 14, 7, and 3. And the Cougars of Kane University advance to the ECAC championship game tomorrow here at Mustang Stadium. We will come back in to put a bow on this one. Stats, highlights, and more. That's next. This is GoMustangSports.com. Boy, a tough way for the season to end. Stevenson had a 1-0 advantage in the second half but couldn't hold on. They fall 2-1 to Kane here in the semifinals of the ECACs. Tonight at Mustang Stadium, Glenn Clark with you on GoMustangSports.com. And the Stevenson players came over to thank their supporters who came out. The supporters gave them a nice, well-deserved ovation for a great season. 14-7-3 is how they finished the year. Let's take a look at our second half highlights. See how it all played out. It was scoreless at the half. Not for the lack of opportunities for the Cougars. They had chance after chance after chance after chance. Not able to get anything going. DR Medtart got a great look on this free kick in front. Just nobody able to clean it up. Gonzalez was in the area, as was Dylan Holy. Neither one of them got to it, but Medtart serves it in. Holy heads it home. Mustangs on the board in the 60th minute and feeling good about themselves. It got to late in the second half, still on top, 1-0 in the 78th minute. Felipe Lucas just gets some space, puts it over towards the far post. Delatano thinks it's going wide, decides not to play it, waves everybody off. It goes home. We're equal 1-1. Good job by Konzelman of protecting the goal line, and that keeps it alive. So that in the 88th minute, Max Acosta can settle it, turn, and blast it home. That's the game winner for the Cougars from Acosta. They get the 2-1 victory here tonight. Final stats, Mustangs outshot 24-14, outcornered 14-2. The statistics suggest that the soccer gods did something about how things played out tonight. Stevenson's going one goal from Dylan Holy, the goal scorers for Kane, Lucas, and Acosta as they win 2-1. That'll do it for us. want to thank everybody who made our broadcast possible. Evan Gloyd, the director. Joe Wamba leading the crew. Dylan Maring, Lauren Brightwell, David Hesse, Sean Valentine, Lizzie Kudal, as well as Jimmy McDonald Mercer. Great work, all of you. Thanks also to the sports information departments of both schools for making our broadcast possible. It's been a great day. I'm going to check out let Christian Taylor come in and take you through as you see what's coming up next. Muhlenberg and Widener, our second semifinal for the right to face Kane in the ECAC championship match tomorrow at 4 o'clock here at Mustang Stadium. Christian will have you for the rest of the weekend. Thanks to everybody for tuning in tonight. Stick around. Christian will be with you shortly for the entire team. I am Glenn Clark. Again, your final score is unfortunately Kane 2, Stevenson 1. This has been GoMustangSports.com.